The title's true. It is not clickbait. I am the director of network operations and I was able to enter the field three years ago with no degree, no IT certifications, and no prior work experience. Welcome, guys, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Bearded IT Dad, where we give you advice and insight on how to grow your career in the IT field. My name's Dakota, and like I stated in the beginning, I am the director of network operations for a local ISP. I was able to enter the IT field about four years ago now, and I entered the IT field with no degree, no certifications, and no prior work experience. I was actually a bulldozer operator before I entered the IT field. I had a really great paying job. You know, I was a bulldozer operator and I've told the story many times on the channel. If you've heard it before, I apologize, but I was a bulldozer operator and you know, I just got tired of doing work to put food on the table. I wanted to do what I enjoyed doing. I really enjoyed working on t tech. I really, really enjoyed working with technology and I, I just got fed up just doing just a job I hated. So my wife and I talked it over and I made a career change, but it wasn't just as simple as that. It took months for actually me, for me to make the actual switch from a regular job, you know, a production job into an IT role. I'm going to tell you what are some of the things I did to make that switch. And if you guys are in a similar position, or if you have any questions at all about the IT field, I'd like you to ask them here on the stream. Or if you're watching this on the replay, put your questions down in the comments below and I'll answer them for you. So one of the first things I did, I started doing some research and probably much like you, if you're watching this video, I went to YouTube and started watching YouTube videos about IT. What are some of the skills I needed to have to be able to land a job? And one of the first things that became apparent is certifications were really important in the IT field. So I started studying for certifications. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, you said you landed a job with no IT certifications, and that is the case. I didn't get my first IT certification, the CompTIA A+, until all months after I was actually working in the field. But I started studying for it right away. And one of the big tips I tell everyone when I'm talking to them about what you can do to help improve yourself and make yourself look better to potential employers is to start studying for a certification that applies to your job, but list it on your resume now. And I'm not talking about lying on your resume. I'm talking about if you are studying for a certification, you should list that certification on your resume and list that you are currently studying for that certification and you, when you plan on taking the exam for that certification. That will do several things for you, I found out later on. That will help one, get you through a lot of the HR screening filters that really can make the, you know, really decide whether or not a human even sees your application or resume. And two, it will show that you're actually interested in learning those skills and advancing your career without being told what to do. That will go a long way for most employers. So I highly recommend any certifications or material you're currently studying, make sure and list that on your resume. Now, I was currently studying for the A+, but I didn't have it. So one of the other things I started to do was starting to go out to networking events and networking meetups with uh, other people working in the IT field. I went on websites like meetup.com and uh, LinkedIn and started looking for networking events. This mindful was pre-pandemic and a lot of in-person events were a lot more popular. They've definitely started coming back. I was actually just looking the other day and there is still actually quite a bit of networking events where you can go out and talk to other people in the networking field. And what you'll find is a lot of people working in the IT field are really open to answering questions and giving you advice and helping you out. Um, on your career journey, you'll find that most people here in the IT field are quite friendly. So um, I went to these events and told people what I was looking to do, what I wanted to do, what my career goals were. And I got a lot of advice and made some connections that way as well. You'll find, unfortunately, in this field, a lot of times it can be not what you know, but who you know. Um, 
is that a fair no i don't think so and i really hate that this field is still kind of like that but it is just the case you know it is more than often than not sometimes it's who you know so going out there and kind of spreading your name and getting to know people in the it field will really go a long way another thing you can do along those lines is start labbing at home practicing with the skills you're learning but then also publishing that information like creating a blog or a youtube channel um you know documenting the things you are doing and putting it out there for the world you can create an article on your linkedin profile that will show people and future employers that you really enjoy this that you're willing to work on things outside your normal working hours you know to the fact that you're willing to better your skills and learn more even though you're not being asked to um and then you know it also is another way to demonstrate you actually have the skills and experience that is needed to do the job so just kind of you know getting out there and figure out what the requirements are for the job you want to land will really go a long way and again for those of you just tuning in welcome if you have any questions all at all about the it field feel free to drop them in the chat or if you're watching this on the replay make sure and put your questions in the comments below and i will get back to you so Hopefully everyone is having a good evening. I know it's St. Patrick's Day. I made sure and put on a green shirt before the live stream. So, and I, I being a, a holiday, St. Patrick's Day, I'm not sure how many people are actually tuning in tonight. The point I'm trying to get across is if you are serious about getting in a, jo a job in the IT field, you shouldn't let anything hold you back. It is if someone like me can go from absolutely no IT experience and be able to land a job making decent money in the IT field. Um, and then three years later, be able to level up my career to a director level position. There's no reason that you can't do that as well. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a cakewalk by any means. If it was super easy, everyone would be doing it. But it is absolutely achievable and it's absolutely something you can do. Welcome, guys. I see some of you are starting to tune into the live stream. Hope you guys are doing great this evening. If you have any questions at all, make sure and drop them in the chat that is what i am here to do is to answer your questions and help you advance your career in the it field so it can be when you just go out to start applying for jobs it can be tough because understand if you are starting out in the field much like me with no certifications no experience and no no college education you're going to get rejected and you're probably going to get rejected quite a bit. That's, I mean, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But every time you apply for a job and every time you go for an interview, you should be viewing that as a learning opportunity to better your skills and to advance your knowledge. You're advancing your knowledge. You're getting that much better for the next time. A question in here how often do certifications need to be renewed well that really depends on the certification some certifications never need to be renewed uh, once you get them you have them for life um, most of the CompTIA certifications renew on a three-year schedule so every three years you have to renew your CompTIA certification now there's several ways you can do it you can either just straight up renew it um, take a test to prove that you still know the knowledge or you can get a higher level certification and that will renew your lower level certification um so like if i was to go get a network plus a security plus or something like that that would renew my CompTIA a plus from that date moving forward so um you know and certifications like the ccna that's on a three-year schedule most certifications are on a three-year schedule so other than learning how to uh, network systems, what, in your opinion, is also important to learn? 
I mean, it really depends on what your career path is. So that is another thing I want to bring up. Don't just get certifications for the sake of getting certifications. What do you want to do with your career? Find out what you want, what interests you, and build a career path. Um, there's websites like CompTIA's and several other of them that have certification recommendations depending on the career path. If you want to get into cybersecurity, such as like a penetration job or an analyst job, there's certain certifications you should be taking to go towards that, work towards that goal. Uh, if you're just looking to get into the field, get a general certification like the CompTIA A+. That's going to give you a good fundamental knowledge and kind of cover all your bases. Um, if you're looking for a networking certification, go for like the Cisco CCNA or the CompTIA Network Plus. If you're looking for a um, cloud certification, go with whatever vendor interests you the most, AWS, uh, Azure, GCP. Um, go with that, whatever is going to advance your career the most. Um, and I heard the saying once, and it is, I think it's very true. Your, whatever IT certifications you get are not for your current job. They're for your next job. They are to better and further you along in your career journey. So just keep that in mind. Make connections every day. Always be selling yourself to others. You know, that that is true. Um, you know, you want to grow your network. Um, and you'll find, even though if you're not looking for a job, having that network is just good to have. If you are stuck on a problem, you can reach out to your network of people you know and ask for help. If you you know, happen to lose your job, you know, these times are very uncertain. You know, we have this looming recession that we're kind of in right now and jobs are fluctuating. You know, I don't think we're losing jobs in the IT market. I think jobs are changing and there's going to be layoffs. And if you're able to adapt and your skills, you won't be out of work for very long, especially if you have a good network of people, you know, the, you know, as soon as you get laid off, you say something that, oh gosh, I lost my job. And you have a lot of people, you know, they're going to be out there helping you find a new job before you know it. I struggle with understanding what routers strip off and add to packets or frames uh, or what what part of prepping for network plus uh or this is the part for network plus that just isn't clicking for me so keep in mind routers deal with layer three they they really all they look at is the layer three address the ip address they really don't care much else about the packet yes they can add and remove stuff depending on vlans and all that but that's where the router sweet spot is, is dealing with IP addresses. So hopefully that, that kind of guided you a little bit. Switches deal with layer two, Mac addresses. Routers deal with more layer three. Are there some switches that deal with layer two? Absolutely. But you're mainly gonna see routers dealing with the IP addresses and stuff like in regards to that. So if you guys have any questions at all, I see that we got some more people starting to tune in. Uh, so first off, welcome. But let's talk about any questions you have about, you know, either you're looking to advance your career, try to figure out what to study next. What's the popular trends? Should you be using chat GBT? Whatever questions you have, feel free to ask them here in the chat. If you happen to be watching this on the replay, Put them down in the uh, comments and I will answer them there too. How long is too long to work on the help desk? Uh, I don't think there's a too long. I mean, if you're happy, you know, stay on the help desk as long as you're happy with it. But if you're looking to advance your career, I say there's a minimum time and at absolute bare bone minimum, I would stay on the help desk for at least one year um because that's kind of the sweet magic number the preferred time frame would be two years two years is the best if you can stay on the help desk for two years you're going to really find it a lot easier to move into your next job but minimum of a, of a year um 
I mean, I've seen people in the help desk for 10, 15 years and be completely happy making plenty of money to fulfill their needs. So it's really what you want to do with your career. If you want to level up quickly and make more money or work in a different role, then I'd suggest leaving sooner. Um, but I want to do it any sooner than a year. One year, if you just leave after a year, it, it kind of raises some eyebrows why you left so quickly. And I mean, unless an amazing job comes along, then you got to do what you got to do. You got to support your family and do what's best for you and your family. So, excuse me. Where is everyone tuning in from tonight? I'm always so curious where everyone tunes in from the, on the show from. I'm here in rainy Oregon. It's actually been quite sunny lately. Um, but yeah, we got Phoenix in the house, Miami, Miami, Florida, New Mexico. All right. Okay. I've reached the minimum. I am a year and a half. I'm in a year and a half, but don't want to be there longer than two years. Thanks. Absolutely. And there's no harm in starting to look before you actually decide to make the switch. Start looking at the jobs and start applying. So, wow, we got South Dakota, Central Florida, Trinidad, North Carolina. It's awesome. On resumes in work experience selection, with bullets, should they be tasks or projects? Uh, I know there should be qualifiable info. I know there should be qualifier info. So I think there should be a mixture of both. I think it's like a two two thirds tasks and a third projects is really kind of the sweet spot. So list you know list the several several of the the main tasks and make sure they're relevant to the job you apply for i never you i i suggest and a lot of people hate it because it takes a lot of work but don't use the same resume twice when you're applying for jobs tweak it for each jobs and so you list the tasks from that previous work experience that are relevant to the job you're applying for and, th and then list like one or two projects you worked on that are hopefully relevant or at least show you know skills that are you know going to be desired at your future position so that's kind of the balance i go with is you know two-thirds skills a third projects or you can do three quarters and one third uh, one quarter um kind of mix it up from that we got Chicago in the house. Awesome. What are you guys struggling with when it comes to really the IT world? What is difficult for you guys? Um, you know, when you're trying to look for work or trying to advance your skills in the IT field, you know, it's not just about always getting that next job. Sometimes it's just about leveling up your skills. Um, my biggest struggle is finding time to study. Um, I have so much on my plate. You know, I, I work a full-time job as a director of network operation. Uh, I run this YouTube channel, which is like a second full-time job. Um, I have a wife and three kids. We just bought a house that needs so much work. Oh my gosh, we bought a 1947 house. And it's a nice house, don't get me wrong, but it needs, it needs some work. It needs a lot of TLC and we've been busting our butts uh, but time time management is the hardest thing for me and uh so that is my biggest struggle what is some struggles you guys are facing uh, i'm from india welcome i want to know about micro tick micro tick surf i think that's supposed to be microsoft and that was just a typo microsoft certifications excuse me oh excuse me so microsoft certifications microsoft certifications is an ever-changing world i will be 100 percent honest with you um i know microsoft has recently released some new it it certifications let's take a look here 
so the most popular Microsoft certifications you're going to come across are like your cloud-based Azure ones. Those are going to be the most stable uh, certifications. Um, if we take a look here at Microsoft's website. Here. Nope, that's not working for some reason. There we go. So this is really where to get your most meat of your information. And what I recommend when you're interested in Microsoft certifications, come down here to this role section, and figure out what about Microsoft interests you the most. Uh, for me as a, in my role as a uh, director of network operations, I deal with primarily in administration for Microsoft systems, active directory, stuff like that. Um, we don't deal with a lot of cloud. Uh, we definitely don't do AI. Um, so my path would be right here in administration is what I do. But this is really where I recommend you come and try to figure out what Microsoft certifications is look into the role. So let's here just kind of click on administration. So right here, the first one administering Windows Server 2012. Um, that is definitely going to be a common um, Microsoft Windows Server certification that you're going to see in the IT field and a lot of uh, oh so you weren't even asking Microsoft you're asking micro tick micro tick certifications micro tick routers I have not a clue I've never heard of micro tick my apologies micro tick what is micro tick It must not be common here in the US. This is the first I've heard of Microtech. Interesting. It's definitely not something I would imagine seeing just kind of looking at their website. It's not something I would expect to see in large enterprise environments. Um, you know, it, it's if you're looking at Microtech, um, I mean, that's just me. I, I have very little experience with um, Microtech. I've never heard of them. The common systems you're gonna see in like an enterprise environment is gonna be like the Cisco, Rubik's, um, stuff like that. Um, you know, HP systems, um, Juniper. Those are gonna be the most common and well-known amongst IT employers, at least here in the United States. Um, I've never heard of Microtech before, so that kind of, to me, is my gauge of judging them. Um, I mean, I'm definitely interested in, I'm, I'm gonna take a look into it after this live stream, but I don't think, um, I don't have any advice to give you, so sorry. That's my advice. So with my background surviving sex work, uh, I don't know what to put on my resume. I'm, I've, I'm done with this IT program I'm doing. I just le leave employment history blank or what? Thanks appreciated. Um, the best thing I would probably recommend doing is seeing if you can maybe get with a local nonprofit and do some volunteer work with them for experience um or just list your prior work experience i mean that's what i did when i um entered the it field um, as a bulldozer operator um, i just tried to list prior work experience that was relevant and if you don't have any of that um, like I said, try to maybe see if you can do some volunteer work, um, go to some of these networking events and start talking to them and s tell them, look, you're looking to get experience in the IT field. So listen on your resume so you can land a job um, and see if anyone knows of anyone out there that's looking for someone to come in and do some volunteer networking or some just basic entry level computer stuff. That would be um, one of the best recommendations. Um, I have for you. So that's what I would list for experience. I can't paste links within your channel, of course. Oh, sorry, I, I be a museum. 
remember they are asking from an international perspective. Absolutely. Uh, and that was in regards to the Microtech. Um, I just haven't, haven't heard of them before. It's not, this might be a very vague question, but is there a certain skill or knowledge that, that the job market is looking for, for new techs going into it? The most important skill you can have looking going into it is your people skills your soft skills um and this goes for everyone if you are getting into it um i think the most important skill you can have is your ability to communicate with others that is a skill that is near impossible to teach on the job and will take you the furthest in this IT career field. Can you explain something about EPON slash GPON technology? What do you want to know about GPON technology? Um, GPON is amazing. Um, you're able to uh, carry gigabit ethernet. Um, There's a fiber optic PON network to the end provider. Um, my local ISP here uses GPON. Um, I have a gigabit symmetrical connection over GPON uh, to the home. So that's um, that's something. <laughs> thank you, absolutely. And thank you for the super chat. I really pre appreciate the $5 super chat there. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys' support. This channel is finally starting to grow and your guys' support means a lot to me. Uh, it, it continues to fuel the mission. It makes it uh, that much easier for me to continue creating videos and doing live streams, answering your questions. Do you use any programming languages at your work? Um, to be 100% honest with you, like Bash, I, I do some Bash scripting, uh, but I tend not to do a lot of programming. Uh, you know, we don't do network network programmability. We don't do like any Python or anything. Um, really the extent of my programming language at work is uh, just working in the CLI and um, like with Juniper CLI and then um, some ba basic bash, bash scripting and that's about it. I am not that technical. So what other paths are there? Most people say CompTIA slash college. If you don't have a lot of technical experience, definitely CompTIA, um, I would say. College, like, college is great. I, I, I am not a believer in college. Uh, I am a college dropout myself. College is not for everyone. With that said, college is great, though, for some people. Um... CompTIA is going to be the easiest. It's going to have the least amount of barrier to entry. It's going to cost the least amount. It's going to take less time. And every employer is going to recognize CompTIA certification. CompTIA is very popular um, and is very laser focused towards um, your job. You know, we're college. You're learning all these other skills, you know, reading, writing, whatever, math that aren't necessarily focus towards your position you're working towards where a it certification is laser focused right at what you want to get into so i am working as a senior networking technician and we use these technologies to provide local uh, internet connection to our customers fiber to the home uh fiber termination to the home yeah that's um that's what we use we we are a fiber to the home uh provider um at my work so we use a g pawn um and we are exploring X xgs pawn so it's it's really cool when you start when you think of the big picture where we were just a few years ago and now that we're able to provide gigabit ethernet to the home and it's super cool so um, and like XGS pawn, which is capable of up speeds up to 10 gig symmetrically to the home. That's amazing. So 
Uh, I watched your video about creating and using a home lab. Great information. Thank you. Uh, I am a super strong believer in creating a home lab for really anything that you're studying for. You need to be practicing. And whether that home lab is physical or virtual or in the cloud, uh, that can vary. But um, like it, for the, comp, like the Cisco CCNA, I think the best thing you could do is create a physical home lab. Now, a virtual home lab, either in Packet Tracer or GNS3 or whatever, will absolutely do the job, 100%. But there's just something about having that physical equipment, watching it boot, connecting that cable, plugging it in, um, just is that much further. So, and my ISP provided me a MicroTik router, so I was interested in the MicroTik certifications. Interesting. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know anything about MicroTik. Um, I do see, like, I, I still have their website up, and this definitely looks like um, a home ONT, like right here, passing across the screen, or I mean, even this could be, this is, uh, looks like just a wireless router. So, but, um, yeah, I, I, I haven't done anything with Microtik. Uh, I'm experienced with Atran and in the GPON environment. So that's where my experience and certificate, you know, like knowledge is don't necessarily have technically certifications in GPON or taking classes and stuff, but, um, yeah. So home labs was a game changer for me. Uh, I used to mimic my works environment and play with it. That's what I did to really get some great networking knowledge. Uh, so I went out and bought some basic Cisco routers and I would build them, um, set up environments very similar to what I had in, at work and just kind of mimic it in my home environment. And a lot of times I, like I wanted to, if I wanted to see if something was possible at work, I tried out on my home lab first. Um, my work used a lot of Cisco Meraki gear and I was fortunate enough to get my hands on some Cisco Meraki licensed gear. And I had a full stack Cisco Meraki deployment, firewall switch AP. And I was able to try out configurations um, using my home lab and not jeopardize the production environment to try out new and interesting things. And it worked a lot. Um, that's actually, I, I wrote a, an article on Cisco Marquis community forum about a PowerShell script I created for their SSL VPN connection uh, to auto configure everything for you. And it's still there. And it's, it's, it's actually what got me this trophy It's what got me this trophy from Cisco Meraki. I don't know if you guys can see it. But yeah, that's what ended up getting me this trophy from them is um, having my home lab and writing an article about a configuration I did. So home labs are huge. They're super important. But yeah. What's that? What percentage of time in IT is dedicated to maintenance and response? And what percentage of time do you think is just keeping busy while you wait for an incident to respond? Um, it depends on the employer. It depends on how thinly spread you are. Um, I've worked for my first job in the IT field was for a hotel chain of, we had 18 different locations all across the US and we were a team of three, including myself when I was hired on. We were busy all the time all the time we were sadly we were constantly had something going on um then i did a short amount of time at a school district as a network uh, engineer and we were twiddling our thumbs um, we had too many people too much work uh, or too little work and it was super boring at my current job right now um i am the director of not network operation i also handle most um, basic IT for our internal teams as well. Uh, I am constantly busy. There is no rest at all. So it really depends on your employer 
um you, that will fluctuate hugely and i will tell you it, it will come in waves you'll notice you'll go through a lot of times where you're busy and you got a whole bunch of projects and then all of a sudden it'll dive down and you'll get a bit of breathing room and then some new projects will start up and stuff so it it will kind of go like that so that's that's from my experience what i've seen i'm having a blast using packet tracer eventually we'll create uh hope to create a home lab packet tracer is a lot of fun and it's completely free uh i mentioned it during my home lab video uh packet tracer is a great resource it used to not be free um I remember back in the day, people used to pirate packet tracer. I'm not saying I ever did, but I know people who um, had copies of packet tracer that I questioned the legitimacy of. But anywho, um, it, it's now that Cisco finally decided to just offer it for free to the public. It is a great learning resource. Um, when you feel like you start have started out grow packet tracer, you can look into GNS3, which goes from a simulator like packet tracer is it's a actual simulator. It's not actually running an iOS environment. Where GNS3, you can actually load a Cisco iOS um, image onto into it and run it virtually. Um, but that becomes really tedious and difficult and definitely not for the faint of heart. Definitely not, not for someone who is just looking to enter the field um, and is just practicing. Packet Tracer, hands down, way easier. And I think in all honesty, a, a physical lab is easier than GNS3. Okay. Uh, it would depend on the environment, however, I will say a well-built environment will focus on maintenance and should minimize the incidents. Absolutely. Is there a to tech toolkit you can recommend or electronics toolkit? Um, I don't have a recommendation. I do like um, iFixit's line of tools. Um, for the most part, like tech toolkits and stuff, I'll get off of Amazon. And I will really typically just get what looks right at the time um you know there's no real name brands i go with uh, what is affordable to the budget i'm working with at that time um but yeah like a basic i fix it something like this if this is what you're talking about like a nice screwdriver set um i fix it is pretty pretty good and pretty well known you can get these cheaper sets. I've seen them in the field. Um, like my current work has a set very similar to this one here. Um, it's cheap. It does the job. You don't need anything fancy. These will strip out and break a lot easier than the iFixit, I will tell you. Um, like one of my jobs, it got me one of these folding kits. It, it really just depends. Uh, I fix it is more expensive, but they'll last longer. Uh, these other chips ch ch uh, kits are cheaper and placeable, you know, type of thing. So I use I fix and love it. There you go. Sounds like you can get uh, kudos settings. It sounds like you can, sounds like you can get kudos setting up in GNS3 instead of playing with a physical home lab. Not quite sure what you're saying, but sounds good. Do you guys have any other questions I can answer? I know it is St. Patty's Day. Probably most of you are getting ready to start drinking or something. Um, but what other questions do you guys have for me before we wrap up this live stream? What tips uh, for an older person trying to move into IT from a non-IT field? Um, it's really not different. Um, I've, I've been actually asked that several times, and I don't think it is any different for you than anyone else looking to get in IT. You just have to start putting yourself out there, start networking with people, start applying for jobs. Um, don't wait. Just go out there and start applying for jobs, and you'd be surprised. You never know when you might be the most qualified person. Um, have faith in yourself. So, 
um but yeah i don't think it's any different i don't think age makes a difference in, in the it field um i really don't i've seen a huge age range um in the it field thank you absolutely all right well i think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this live stream tonight it's, i know it's a little bit shorter one but uh you know it's it's a, been a great time and anyway so thank you guys for tuning in i hope you guys found this informative uh if you haven't already make sure and subscribe and hit that bell icon as we're releasing videos uh weekly and uh, several times a week so thank you guys for tuning in until next time keep learning